Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about aircraft hardware and there's going to be a large variety of hardware that you're going to use on your aircraft, specifically here looking at rivets and bolts. We'll talk about how they're labeled, take some confusion out of uh, what to look for and what exactly it means. So first of all when we start with rivets we have the 470 rivets which would be a universal head, a domed head rivet, and then the 80 afterwards indicates that it's hard. Same with the flush rivets. These would be 426 rivets and again you have the AD afterwards which means it's a hard rivet. So you want to make sure that for structural purposes of the aircraft uh, they are actually hard. So if we look at how they're labeled for the domed head ones or the universal head and the flush head ones, you have the diameter in 3 seconds of an inch and most of the ones that you're going to deal with are 3 seconds and eighth inch. And for the height of the rivet for the universal head, the height is going to be measured from the bottom of the domed head in sixteenths of an inch. But for a flush head rivet, the length is indicated right from the top all the way to the bottom of the rivet in sixteenths of an inch again. So for a universal rivet, an AD4-6, you'd have a diameter of 4 seconds or eighth inch, which is a popular rivet to have in an aircraft, typically used internal in the aircraft where we don't really care about airflow. And for the length 4-6 would be 6 sixteenths or 3 eighths of an inch. So how do we pick the length of the rivet? Well most of the time it's by the plans, um, but here's how it's actually calculated and it's, it's important to consider this every once in a while. So if we take two pieces of aluminum, a 25 thou and a 32 thou, we drill a hole in those two pieces of aluminum and in this case here we're going to use a number 40 drill bit for a 3 32nd inch rivet and why do we use a number 40 drill bit because that ends up with a diameter of 0 0.098 and a 3 32nd rivet is actually a little bit smaller than that so it slips into the hole nicely and then when it's riveted it mushrooms out to fill the hole so for a universal rivet the length that we want to use is going to go through the two pieces of aluminum and come out the other side a distance of 1.5 times the diameter of the rivet. Now most of the time in aircraft plans it's going to tell you what size rivet to use. But every once in a while you want to consider this because I actually find in some of the plans that the rivet length is a little bit too small or they use whole size rivets instead of half size rivets. So how do we calculate this? 1.5 times the diameter is equal to that. We add the thickness of the material, so 25 thou and 32 thou. And we add all that up and then calculate the length of the rivet in sixteenths of an inch. So 0.197 and we'll multiply that by 16 and that gives us a number of 3.16. So the rivet that we'd use here is 3-3 or maybe 3-3.5, maybe have to round it up. So when you actually rivet it, it will mushroom out and fill that hole. And then it should look something like this. There are tools to measure this. But just to get an idea of what it kind of ends up is a half a diameter of height and 1.5 diameter of width. And like you saw in the last video, there's a tool to measure this. Okay, quickly on to pop rivets. Cherry Max is structural. Any of the aluminum ones are typically used for plexiglass or something that's not aluminum. And the steel ones used for control rods. And the bottom two you'll see in the, in the kit or in the RVs. Here are Oops rivets, 1097 which are useful for attaching nut plates, sometimes very small head, so not for structural use. And then on to bolts. You see that the threaded portion here is the length. It doesn't matter what length the bolt is. If there's a hole in it, it'll have a little bit different designation, which I'll show you in a second. And if there's a hole in the head for safety wire, again, a different designation. So how do we label these ones for an AN3 bolt here? The width is in sixteenths of an inch, so we typically see three sixteenths and, and quarter inch bolts. And then the height here is in eighth of an inch, but there's a little trick to this one, so we'll talk about it for multiple bolts. 
And then we have the threaded portion, which ends up being the same for all the bolts, about 3 8 of an inch, and this is what we call the grip. But the length that you're going to select is the total length of the bolt, including the threaded portion. So it works all the way up to a 3 7, so a 3 4 would be a half inch length bolt, 3 16 inch width. And 3 5, 6, and 7. And here's where it gets interesting. There's no such thing as a 3 8. We jump up to a 3 10, which is a 1 inch length bolt. So a 3 7 would be 7 8, and a 3 10 would be 1 inch length. And again, it starts over again when you get to 3 17, which, be, which would be 1 and 7 8 inch. And then it jumps up to 3-20, which would be a 2-inch bolt. So for an AN 4-6 bolt, the diameter would end up being 4 16 or a quarter inch. I wrote it wrong there, sorry, math in public. And the length of the bolt would be 6 eighths, which again works for anything that's less than 7. So another designations we have, so 4-6A is going to be where there's no hole drilled in the end. So this is what you're going to be used most of the time, is going to have an A designation at the end. If we only write 4-6, then there is a hole in the middle of the thread which is going to be used for a castle nut and a cotter pin attachment. And if we have an H in the designation, so a 4H-6 would then have a hole in the head, which would be used for safety wiring the bolt after it was torqued. So for washers, we have the AN 960 and the, we have the 10 and the 10L for regular and thin. And then the different nuts, the castle nut with the cotter pin, the normal elastic stop nuts, which are used most of the time. And then you have the metal lock nuts, which would be typically used in the engine compartment. So here's what the castle nut looks like when it's installed. A couple other things we'll talk about is when these are installed, you have to at least see one thread coming out and a max of four threads so that you know that the nut is not tightened all the way down to the grip portion of the bolt. And also you can have max four washers. So if you end up having that, you need to change the size of the bolt. So where do we apply these? Well, anywhere that where the bolt actually rotates, we're gonna use a castle nut and a cotter pin. So you see here on the rudder of the aircraft. And then the other places, the control surfaces have bearings. So the bolt does not rotate. Here's the elevator. The bolt will not rotate. The bearing inside or the control end bearing will rotate instead. Now onto screws. There's gonna be multiple types of screws here. Similar elastic nuts and metal nuts for the engine compartment and also what we call Tinnerman washers, which are used for installing in fiberglass. So we distribute the load of the screw when we're, when we're screwing it to fiberglass. So a couple areas where I use different screws is on the spinner here. They have a built-in uh, washer underneath the head and then anywhere that there's fiberglass, we're gonna use a Tinnerman washer see here on the wing tips. These ones actually are torque screws, so they have a six bolt pattern. And you can get into decorative screws as an Allen heads and torque screws, but these are gonna be really only used for decorative stuff. So in the cockpit, around the screws, um, these are not gonna be structural. Next thing we'll talk about is nut plates. So this is kind of a hidden nut. There's lots of varieties, again, countersunk, regular, different size screws and bolts. And here an A and 3 bolt is just going to thread into that. So there's going to be lots of areas on the aircraft where you're going to have nut plates. See on the example of a spar here, you have nut plates on the forward side as you can see riveted in place and then you just screw the bolt or the nut into it. So while we're talking about nut plates, here's the click bond ones that you've seen in previous videos. These get bonded in place and then once they're bonded, you pull the silicone fastener out. These are called Skybolt quarter turn fasteners, which I use around the cowling. Very convenient fastener to use. Simple quarter turn in and out, and these are adjustable. 
So when you first have them, there's that little pin in there that I'll point to in a second. And you just tighten the screw to you're happy where it is. And then you snap it out. And then you pull the little pin out. And then that inside fastener will lock. And now you have a quarter turn fastener that's perfectly adjusted. So all around the cowling, the oil door, it does take a little space on the back there. You saw it has a little bit of depth to it. So cushion clamps are going to be popular in the engine compartment, holding oil and fuel lines measured in sixteenths of an inch in diameter, come in different colors. And they're just held on with an A and 3 bolt or a screw. These are snap bushings that protect wires going through ribs as you'll see here in the image. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. The biggest thing about hardware is that use the aviation stuff, don't use the automotive stuff. It's very important uh, for structural. Unless it's decorative, then you can do whatever you want. So build yourself something, take it for a rip, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.